Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi, hi, hi. Nice to hear you, but we didn't see you. <laughs> So, um, what about the sound? Sound is okay, yeah? You can write uh, into chat. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, great, perfect. Oh, hi, Timothée. Hello. Uh, good, your sound is perfect too. Oh, and background, uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. So um, I think we can start. Um, so and uh, we start uh, from our from our routine. Many of you uh, know us, but also I see uh, new members of our webinar, and it is really good. And. Um, now we uh, introduce uh, with us and with you uh, so closer. Um, just a moment, I am going to share my screen. Okay, I hope you can see it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, today our webinar uh, will have a focus on the new features in Gazebo simulation. And uh, these materials will help you to improve your skill in Gazebo simulation. So you can find the new features such as a beginner, or uh, if you um, if you use Gazebo earlier, uh, you can open uh, new features, new methods of work uh, with this uh, software. I think we can start. And first of all, of course, so let me introduce uh, with you uh, our speakers. So me, Svetlana Salomatnikova. I'm Drone Competition and Activities Manager of Copter Express and Timofey Kondratiev. Uh, Timofey is a techni technician programmer of Copter Express. And today Timofey um, will tell you uh, more features and moreover, you can ask uh, any questions uh, during our webinar and we, we, we will be glad to answer on it. But before we start, um, this is uh, one of our favorite parts of uh, all uh, webinars. Uh, please turn on your cameras. We can make a common photo. And uh, then we will continue. Just a moment. Yeah. Oh, great, great. Nice to, to see you guys. Perfect, perfect. Oh, many people from other, from all the, over the world connected to us uh, on, one, on Wednesday. It is really great. So, oh, Stanislav provide uh, <laughs> some lessons and <laughs> his students. <laughs> great. It is the best uh, practice. Provide lecture using video <laughs> from teachers. Oh, hi Annelise. Hi Sara. Hi Shutosh. Hi Angel Perez. Hi Samuya. Hi Abdullah. Hi Aish. Uh, hi Dipa Kumar. Hi Juan. Rakesh. Ilya and Tuan Trink. So I think you are ready, and we can uh, create the common photo. Oh, Timothy. I have a, could you, uh, could you help me uh, to make a print screen, please? Uh, yes, how, do, how can I help you with this? Just to make a print screen? Yes, or you can, yeah, 
take a free screen okay. of these videos, please. On All right. One, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we wait your smiles and good mood. And three, two, one, smile. Yes. Thank you, Timothy. Timothy, could you uh, could you repeat this operation again? Okay. We will choose the best water of us. Okay. Yeah, let's do it again. Three. Oh, you can. Um, you can start a uh, time clock by self. Okay, three, two, one, start. Okay. Okay, great. So what is water? Is okay? Or we can do... Things? Yeah, I think it's okay. Or maybe we just for... Uh, okay, we can make that's, another third one. Chance, just... that's our chance of uh, the best water and... Three. <laughs> two, one. Uh, okay, three. Again, three, two, one. Yes. Now it's done. Okay, great. Great. Thank you, Timofey. So today is a really great uh, group uh, who has an interest in uh, our new features. And I think we can continue. So uh, I will continue sharing presentation like uh, this one so it's okay yeah okay uh, good video uh, and uh, have you see have you see do you see my screen Shirley? yes yeah? okay great so thank you for amazing photo and yeah so uh one of our best rule so if you have a question we are very glad to answer on it so you can use the doom chat it will be um useful for us and for you of course and also uh you can unmute your microphone and ask questions ask the question uh, in the live stream and we will answer on it too. So you can choose uh, any method for you. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to say some words about our company, Copter Express. We produce drones for industry and for education. And today, um, our webinar program consists of uh, educational trajectory. I will tell you some interesting information about it. It will be uh, interesting for colleges and universities. Um, then will be a webinar program overview. And then uh, our big part of uh, our webinar, Gazebo Simulation Features. And uh, in the end, we can discuss these materials and uh, maybe we will provide uh, some new topic for our next webinars. So this is a program, program for today. Yeah, so uh, we produce different products, starts from educational and goes to the industrial products of the big drones, drones for air delivery. Uh, and infrastructure for air delivery, such as drone points. Uh, but today we will have a focus on Clover. Clover is our educational product. And so uh, we show you some features of this product, included hardware and software. So of course, you know uh, about area of application drones, it's very widely starting from search and rescue, filming, and uh, group control of drones, such as the drone swarms. But if you know, uh, the main problem of it, uh, we don't have enough number of qualified specialists who can change this world using drones. And uh, that is why we uh support we create and support this system of education 
uh, includes working with uh, schools, colleges, universities, and industry, of course. Uh, this system works with World Skills Organization. Uh, in Russia, it's World Skills Russia. Uh, also, we partner of World Skills Asia. And um, uh, this cooperation uh, help us to cover the world and uh, share our ideas with our uh, students, with our attenders, and who uh, has a similar ideas and who want to help and develop in this area. Um, so, uh, and also one update of our system, uh, we start to prepare some uh, educational program uh, for universities and colleges, and we plan to uh, approve it and uh, provide some pilot projects with universities, uh, such as a partnership between Russian and international universities, uh, using the program, the special model of drones with uh, open source drones, such as a Clover, uh, in their educational program. So if you're interested in this information, of course, you can uh, write me and I will give you more information about it. So, but to return uh, our educational trajectory, uh, we have different age categories and competitions. And we start from 12 years old and we don't have the upper level of age. So uh, the interesting, uh, uh, the inter interesting uh, track of developing our aerial robotic skill uh, with uh, cooperation with the World Skills Russia, World Skills, World Skills Asia, and BRICS. So we started from 2016, and through two years, we have got our first international experience, such as international skill. And then uh, in 2020, we start uh, a big international community, includes uh, many countries and using remote technologies to share it, uh, this knowledge, these technologies for all. And uh, this year, this is a continue of the previous year and we uh, plan to, uh, to make it to improve uh, these technologies and uh, and give you uh, these materials more uh, simply and more useful. Yes, and for it uh, we use uh, open source platform um, Clover. So Clover Clover consists uh, of um, two. Uh, the, the most important part. It's a Pixhawk controller and a Raspberry Pi 4. And this stack uh, allows us to create not only educational drones. So this stack allows us to prepare students from Clover to Pelican, from educational to industrial drones, because uh, these drones using one system, one control system, Pixhawk and Raspberry, and it allows us uh, to prepare a specialist in this area and they can test and using Clover, such as a uh, not expensive product, uh, before working with uh, big industrial drones. It is a really great ecosystem and um, it's uh, really useful in the real world. So, and also Clover as an educational product system allows to develop uh, different skills, uh, starting from assembly and understanding which components we should use to assemble the drones, how to work together and how we can repair it. Uh, then, model of education, so flights, flights in manual, flights uh, using uh, only VLOS, 
type of piloting or BV loss, so beyond visual light of sight piloting. So it's uh, such as FPV race and or FPV monitoring. But uh, this model includes only manual flights. And finally, the big model of education, uh, of course, it's a programming model. And this model includes um, many type of, um, of possibilities of working with drones. So you can start from the simple program, uh, such as uh, flight, go to point and land using terminal, such as a classic programming, or for example, block programming. And then you can uh, improve your skill uh, step by step. And uh, finally, you can use the really difficult and complex um, complex uh, task, you can perform complex tasks using this plot platform, such as a test platform, for example. So, and so uh, of course, um, we have now a big community of uh, more than 22 countries. It's really awesome. And we expect to join uh, other countries and also um, make, um, uh, make widely community in each country and uh, it's a really great uh, opportunity to work with drones together in your country and provide the cooperation with other members from other countries. Uh, some words of educational uh, trajectory. So um, step uh, the first step of it, uh, it's a practice using simulation environment, such as gazebo. Then you can uh, apply uh, the gotten skill in the simulation environment to real clover drone. So you can try to work with simulation, then work on the real drone. It allows you to get the fundamental knowledge about how the system works. Um, the materials of it uh, you can use. Um, so the webinar for beginners for start with the simulation uh, was in 20th of February. Uh, the webinar of starts in uh, uh, in working with Clover in autonomous flights was in uh, March. Uh, today, uh, today we will give you uh, more deeper knowledge of working with gazebo simulation. Uh, we called it uh, part two, and uh, some knowledge uh, will be great. Will be based on this webinar, but if you didn't watch it, don't check it. It's no problem. Uh, you can uh, watch this one, and then we turn back to this webinar it will be okay for you. And uh, when you have got the fundamental knowledge of working with, uh, with a real drone and working with simulation, uh, you can create something new. And creating something new uh, allows you to provide the project activity with open source technologies using projects uh, which was created before and upgraded. So for you, it's a really great opportunity to hack. You can, uh, you can join for this event in June, 2021. And also uh, you can um, check materials of this project on our website. Uh, and um, you can check how many projects was performed, what about the level of this project, how you can improve uh, this project, or you can make, create something new because the topic is open idea for you. And of course, um, it uh, has uh, only limitation in your mind. But uh, in any time, you can ask in the community about questions about what I create something new. 
and uh, we will be glad to help you in this question, of course. Uh, and finally, of my maybe topic. So uh, this is a materials, uh, this is education materials. You can use it. Uh, you can work with hardware parts, software parts. Uh, you can check the upcoming competitions. And of course, you can apply your project on our contest. So, and uh, before we uh, start the webinar, maybe you have a question about the previous uh, pitch or any suggestions or maybe something. Um, I will be glad to answer on your question. Uh, also, you can write me personal message uh, into Telegram or Zoom. Um, survey for you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I think we can start and Timofey, uh, Timofey, you can continue. Uh, yeah, so, sure. I have, <laughs> I have uh, some short topic of our webinar overview, overview for today. Um, so, okay, I, I hope it's correct. Um, and uh, today we plan to tell you about um, setup of Gazebo simulation. Uh, also, we will tell about how to use the block programming, how to build the virtual, virtual world, and how to add and work with moving objects. So I hope that this webinar will help you. And let's fly. Timofey, welcome. Yes. Let me translate. Let me share my screen. Okay. All right. You can see my screen, hopefully. And I will begin from the virtual machine. Uh, I will not go into much detail this time because I showed this every previous webinar. And oh, today, uh, today... Just a moment, sorry. So we uh, we see um, uh, don we we see a low quality of your screen. Is it still low? Yeah. Let me check something. Is it better now? So just a moment, I will check it. Not really. Not really? Yeah, nope. yeah. no, no, no. Mm, so it's still low. Let me see what I can do with this. Um, well, I can use a uh, wired internet but it will take some time for me to find it oh i think i've already found it <laughs> great uh let me let me just switch the internet okay no problem hello so Atlanta. this is ralph quick question while you're waiting um, I missed the beginning. Will you be doing a recording of the session? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can. Uh, we will. Uh, if you if you want, we can share the Zoom uh, recording, or you can use uh, the our live stream on our YouTube channel. I I will better? share the link in the Zoom chat. Uh, is it better now? No. No? No. Well, let me just reconnect to the, the conference, if, if that helps. Uh, 
Timofey, maybe you try to use the mobile internet for it? Okay. Okay, guys. So uh, while we uh, wait, Timofey, so uh, I see many of you. Uh, uh, so where are you from? Uh, maybe not country, I mean about organizations. So uh, you are from uh, colleges or universities or maybe any. Can you make me a co host, please? Yeah. Moment. Okay, uh, who was from university side, guys? You can uh, write in message or turn up to, to provide the hands up. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's better, but now it's uh, it's crashed again. Oh, I see Deepak Kumar from the university. Yeah, I, I know it's University India. Um, CV Raman University, yeah, great. Uh, Sara, Sara, you are from Italian University, yeah? Okay, so it's a really interesting uh, question. Uh, uh, which is the, your major, which is your specialty uh, in the university? It's really interesting for us uh, because uh, it is uh, your interest uh, for these technologies. And uh, it's uh, really interesting uh, what is it. And uh, could you write in the chat about your major, please? Or specialty? major speciality department maybe in your university. By the way, I think my internet is fine and uh, the speed test showed great speed. And uh, let's just can, let's, let's, begin, let's begin and uh, hope the quality will increase. Ты можешь попробовать увеличить еще разрешение экрана, сделать побольше. А у меня большое? Поменьше? Ну, может быть, поменьше, не знаю. Ну, то есть суть в том, чтобы э, покрупнее шрифт был, тогда он, может быть, будет лучше читаться. Okay, I'm agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sarah use autonomous system to overcome their complexity. Oh, autonomous system, yeah, it's great. It's uh, all a uh, robotic system, I guess. Include it. All right, now yeah. is it better? Uh, yes, so it's uh, not, not ideal, not great, but uh, we can uh, read uh, the yep. information of, from your site, Timofey. Okay, mm -hmm. try, uh, try to launch the the simulator, yes. maybe it's uh -huh. Yeah, a few words about installation. So uh, one more thing. Yeah, you need to download the Clover virtual machine and open it in VMware Workstation Player like this. Just click open, then click retry if there is some error. And uh, after you have installed that, this is the one that I have installed. Make sure you have edited the parameters and uh, the most important parameters are memory, the RAM. Uh, you need to set uh, 
half of what you've got in on your computer if uh, like if you have 16 gigs you can use 8 gigs it's there is no need to have more than 8 gigs because it will not consume that much so on this machine there is maybe 30 plus gigabytes of RAM so I will only use 8 for a virtual machine which is enough and processors uh, if you have a six core processor you need to select three cores if you have four cores you need so you select um, of course two cores and the, the next one is display make sure you click the accelerate 3d graphics and uh, provide some graphics memory the default is i think the default was 256 uh, you need to increase it for maybe to one gig or three gigs well it will not use that much but i just have some uh, additional <clears throat> memory so it will not be bad if i select three here and then go to options and uh, vmware tools and synchronize guest time with host this is important to have uh, the same time on your machine and on your virtual machine uh, otherwise you will not have internet access on your virtual machine so click ok and play a virtual machine. All right, this is my virtual machine. Uh, this is not uh, configured yet. So I will configure it with you. Uh, and what do we will, what will we configure it for? Uh, we want to use block program programming and we need to enable this function functionality in the clover launch file so first thing i'll do is go to home katkin ws src clover clover launch and uh, the file called clover launch right click open this vis with visual studio code Here, I will edit some settings. Uh, I will need to enable Aruko detection. So instead of false, I will run. And if that opens, you can just close it. So keep writing true here. And also the blocks parameter. So I will also have it as true. Now control S and uh, I can close this file and I will now edit another file, uh, the aruko.launch. So if you want to navigate with aruko markers, you need to activate aruko vision position estimator, aruko map and aruko detect. So aruko detect is already working. So you can uh, activate all of the rest parameters but if i don't want to uh, for now i will not activate aruka map because uh, i will show you later what will it uh, make for us so for now i will not detect the whole map so it will be false i will be only navigating with single individual aruka markers and uh, here i will need to uh, select which size of the markers is there. So the default length is 0 0.33. Uh, I will use 0 0.35 because I want to add a model of Aruka marker with the size of the marker 35 centimeters. Why do I want that? Well, because I have prepared a Aruka marker pack package of 100 markers starting with Aruka 200. And uh, the last one is Aruka 299. Each one of them is a model that contains some SDF and config files, as well as materials with texture and with scripts folder. Uh, so each one of them is a marker. I will put them in the virtual machine and add them as a moving object. So this is uh, the thing that we will do later. Uh, but for now, let's uh, see what is block programming. Uh, after 
what programming we will play with those markers. So now I have activated block programming and uh, Aruko detection. And let's open the gazebo as well as Firefox. So I will open Firefox web browser. Is the quality better now? Excellent. Oh, it is. So maybe I will return the resolution to the, to the default one. What do you think of that? Uh, in the Zoom, it's uh, not good quality uh, video, but on the YouTube, uh, the video is better. So mm. maybe it's only in your uh, computer. Maybe it's your internet. Anyway. Mm, okay, let's keep it like that for now. So I've opened the gazebo and I can minimize it for now and open localhost slash enter. And now there is a like image topics. You can see that now we do not have Aruka map image because I did not activate Aruka map. Uh, you can activate it and set it up just the way I did it in previous videos. But for now, I'm working without Aruka map. But I still can detect Aruka markers and I can fly to a specific marker. Uh, and uh, let me go back and open block programming, blocks programming. So this is the thing that we we uh, barely showed you before. Uh, this is, it looks like Scratch, but it's actually Blockly. So you can drag blocks from the left menu and uh, stack it on uh, top of each other and uh, use them to program the drone. So for now, for example, I will take off to one meter. I will use actually 1.5 and it will wait until it reaches this height. Then it will navigate to this position, this point. Uh, let me uh, specify the, co the coordinates. Uh, well, I'm using body, for, so this is using body. So zero, zero, zero relative to body is just keep staying in the same place. So the drone will not go anywhere. And if I add land in the end of the program, the drone will just take off to 1.5 meters and land. Uh, we can see how it works if I run it. So I need to press run and run program okay. And let's see. The drone is taking off the height is 1.5 and it is landing. Uh, what if I wanted to move the drone some distance forward? Well, I can use, uh, I can write 1.5 here in the for, in forward and uh, let's run the program again. So it will probably land somewhere over here. Oh, sorry, it's going to be here. And as you can see, we said uh, 1.5 meters, but it's actually flew less than one meter. It's because the drone is not navigating uh, with Aruk markers. It still can fly, it still can uh, assume its, uh, its position change, like uh, it thinks it is moved 1.5 meters, but it actually moved less than that. Uh, but it's not precise. So in order for us to have better precision, we need to uh, activate some Aruka marker detection. And uh, 
either it can be done either by using Aruka map. So I, I can activate the Aruka map here and we will see how it will change now. So in Aruka map, I will say true. Uh, this number is actually, um, it will be over overwritten by what's in the file, in the txt file of the map. So I will use the cmit.txt as a map. This is a default configuration of the map. So this is, uh, it will describe this type of map. Uh, and there in this file, the length of each marker is specified as 0 0.33, I guess. We can check it if we want to. So I will save it now and I will show you how to find the txt file just to check uh, and make sure what, it, what the size of the marker is. So if I go back and back again, open our compose map and here is my smith.txt. Let me open it. So here, yeah, the size of it is 33 uh, centimeters. Uh, you, you, may, you may ask me what, uh, what are those parameters? What are the, the other parameters? Well, I can show you where you can uh, look and find the reference for it. So if you go to clover that at coex that tag and open our knowledge base the programming here then fiducial markers aruku map based navigation so this is the article that shows you how to configure aruka map so this is the file clover launch where we set aruka to true and we have Aruka launch where we set this, those three parameters as true. And then marker map definition. So map is defined in a text file, each line has the following format. Marker ID, marker size, X, Y, Z, Z angle, Y angle, X angle. So in my case, we have marker ID zero, marker size 0 0.33 x zero, y nine, z zero, and all the angles are zero. So now you know how to work with this path. And you can generate the file with this command and uh, it will create a map for you. So this is the example of generating a map with specific parameters like the size of the markers, the amount of markers on x axis, on y axis and, and the distance between markers and the number of first marker. All right, now let's write a program that will work. We will write this program in blocks programming and it will work with Aruka markers. So once I've um, edited the parameters, I need to restart the Clover. So I open the terminal here and press Control C It will close now. Um, I will run it again and uh, we will write a new program. Okay, now it's closed. I can run it again. Yeah, and let's, instead of body, we will use markers map. And now forward, left and uh, up is changed to X, Y, and Z. Let's, let's see, forward, left, up axis. Now it's changed to X, Y, and Z. And the coordinates are now measured in, of course, in meters. And the origin of the coordinate system is this position. So this is the position with zero coordinates marker map, markers map. And now I will use 1.5, zero and 
1.5 SZ. So we will need to input the actual height of the flight, the altitude of the flight, uh, in order to keep flying. Otherwise, the drone will be just above the ground. The speed, we can increase it to one if we want to, and then wait. Let's see what it does now. Run, OK, and see. The previous time the drone landed here. And now it's landing much closer. Oh, <laughs> it still uh, went back right before the, the landing, but it was hovering in the correct position. Okay, and uh, we can actually make a route for the drone to fly uh, if we add some navigate weights or we can actually copy and paste this navigate weight and paste it again. And we will change the coordinates. Like now I will make a, I will use two meters, oh, two meters here, uh, two meters here and here, and 1.5 here. Then zero meters in X and two meters in Y, and then one more navigate weight with zero and zero, and then land. And it's all relative to marker map. And the weight is clicked here. Now let's try this program. Run, run. First of all, it will go to two meters. Doesn't matter where it starts from. So this time it started from here, but it still goes there. And now it's flying. and landing. You know what's cool about block programming is that here you can see the blocks menu. If you click Python, it will show you the exactly the exact Python program that you can copy and paste and it will do the same thing that this block programming. So it will generate Python code for you. I wouldn't call this code the most optimized because, for example, you don't need to manually type, well, you don't have to manually type uh, x equals y equals z equals here. You can just type 2 comma 0 comma 1.5 and so on. So if I wanted to write this code, I would do it differently. And even the navigate weight here is a little bit different from what you can see in the code examples in the code snippets article. I will show you the code snippets article. And uh, the first code snippet is navigate weight. And as you can see, it is a little bit different from what you've seen here. Uh, for example, it only has the while this while loop after navigate. But the blocks uh, navigate has also, if not res success, raise exception. So it will actually make a, another check for navigate in order for the code not to break. Well, maybe it's better, well. Um, and the default parameters here are not specified. So I would uh, use different default parameters in navigate weight here. And also, there is no um, the parameter called tolerance, which is uh, how precisely to the point you are going to fly to. I mean, it will still fly with the same precision, but it will count the flight as reached uh, after it's reaching closer to closer than zero point two meters. Uh, if if this value was less than that, it might be hard for the drone to detect uh, reach, reaching the position, the desired position, because 
the telemetry will also show some differences. It will not fly exactly in the position that we wanted to fly. It will be a little bit off and uh, the drone might never reach the exactly coordinates that we provided for them. Uh, but yeah, I can copy this code and test it as a program. Let's do that. So let me create a, a folder called ROGS. And in Visual Studio Code, I will open this folder. And here I will create a file. sq.py. sq means square. I enter, I pasted the code here, control S. Yeah, now it's saved. Uh, close this, get started because I don't need it. All right. And now let me run this code from Visual Studio Code. Um, I press this button and let's see. It is taking off. Flying to the point then to another point and so on. So this is just a way for you to explore Python. So if you are better in blocks programming than in Python, you can uh, create a program first and then see the program code. What else can we do here? Well, there are other menus like state, uh, distance to point. Well, it may, it will return you the values uh, if the drone is armed or not, for example. Current flight mode, current range fire or distance. So you can even measure distance with it. Uh, if you wanted to output the distance in range finder, you need to find a block where you can put this code. So uh, let's find a block that will output data somehow. Let's see. LED, GPO, no. Maybe it's in text. Create text. Prompt text with message. Yeah, I guess this may be what we wanted to. Oh, no, not that one. Print, yeah, I think it's print. Let's use this block print and put it somewhere here. And instead of ABC, I will uh, use the state. State, where is this range finder distance? Yeah, like that. And Let's run this program. So it will take off, go to the first point, and then print the range finder distance. So let's see uh, how it does that. Run, okay. Here it printed the distance. So this is the way it prints. And now what's great about this thing is if you go to Python here, there is a correct import. So it's from sensor MSGS, MSG import range. And there is also print or spy wait for message range finder range. So this is just, it will just paste this code for you. So even if, for, if, if you are an experienced programmer in Python, you may want to use blocks programming for as a great way to uh, get correct imports that does everything you need. And now 
if you uh, notice that there is no LED, there is no, nothing important for LED and there is no service for working with LED. If I wanted to change the LED here, so set LED with color, for example, like that. Go to Python and look at this. From Clover SRV import, set LED effect, set effect equals Rospy. So it's just added automatically. And now set effect, fill, air, R, and so on. Let's try this program. Run, okay. So it will go red after reaching this point. It will turn red, let's see. Now it's red and it's writing these messages here. What else we have? So in LED, we can set a, a specific LED with the color. So I will not do that for now. We can even work with GPIO, but it will not work in the simulator. So this is more only for real drones. We do not have Raspberry Pi in the simulator. It will not simulate GPI for you. But there is logic, there is loops. For example, if I wanted to um, repeat oh, something. Okay, interesting question. So about GPO. Uh, so for example, if we, if, we connect, if we want to connect something, for example, uh, any, uh, any outside device. So how we can simulate it if GPO works on, on, the, on the real drone? Well, we cannot simulate it as GPIO. We can, uh, well, if, if there is a, a sensor, for example, LiDAR, you can simulate it in a ROS, but not the mechanical like not the electronical connection with this. So it will just simulate that there is this uh, sensor here already installed. So it's not, uh, I don't think it's, I don't know how to simulate GPIO. Maybe there is a way, but uh, uh, it's not very easy to do. So well, GPIO is mostly for Raspberry Pi. Okay, it's understandable. Yeah, and if you want to read more about GPIO and what you can do with this, you can go to working with GPIO article in programming here and uh, you need to enable some services and uh, there is a program that you can test. You can use it for uh, controlling servo motors and uh, electromagnet. So if you want to, you can connect an electromagnet to the drone. All right. What else is interesting in blocks programming? Well, I think loops are fun to play with. If I, want, if I wanted to like count with I from one to ten by one. Uh, it's just a for loop, and you can you can put your code in it. For example, I will want to take I want to take off, and navigate to this point then to this point, but without this. And in the end, print like rangefinder distance, for example. And I want to do it three times. Uh, let's see how it will behave in this situation. Okay, take off. Uh -huh.
Now it takes off. Goes here. Then it goes there. And it should go back here. It does. And there. And one more time. And one more time. Yep. And it prints the distance. And after all this code, it will actually do the following things. So I don't even need to connect them, but it's better to connect anyway. So it's the same as if I had it that way. So this is the loops. And what about Python? Look at this. Navigate weight for taking off. Then for I in range one, four. And uh, navigate weight one, navigate weight two, and print by weight for message and so on. And then set effect and navigate weight and navigate weight and land weight. Uh, why, you may ask me, why is there one and four while in blocks it was one and three? Well, it's just because in Python, uh, range will return you the values. For example, if you, oh, I can't type here. If you wanted to, if you type range um, 10, it will, oh, okay, let's five. It will return you an object or a, a list depending on the version of, Py of Python uh, from zero, one, two, three, four. The total number of elements is five. So five determines the total number of elements and zero the first element. So it's uh, the five will not be included here. This is important to understand about Python. And uh, if we typed like two comma five, it will just start with two. So it will skip all of those numbers and leave you with two, three, and four, without five, of course. So this is important. Oh, there is also a step uh, argument. If I wanted to skip not one, if I wanted to iterate by more than one step at once. So for example, if there is uh, step two, if I started from zero and end with five, it will return zero, two, and four. Without five, without one, without three. Yeah, this is how you do that. You can read about range in Python documentation. Very uh, great thing to know. You can even go uh, by descending rates or from 10 to five or from 10 to zero. You can, uh, and also with step. Okay, you can even make some functions. So there is a function. Let me do that. I have, haven't used functions in blocks programming, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be too hard. So to do something or to do something return, there are, there is two types of function. One returns a value and another one will not return. So this is mostly more a procedure, not a function. A procedure will not return anything. And this is the function. Let's have a function that will not return anything. And this function will, what will it do? For example, this function will um, give you this loop. So it will loop with the coordinates of 0, 0, 1.5 and 2, 2, 1.5, three times. And I can call this function loop one, just for example. And there's also input, let's see, what's this? 
inputs, input name. So yeah, ah, yeah, I can make arguments for this function. So it will be X and Y. Yeah, great thing. So instead of going X zero, Y zero, I will in the second uh, navigate, I will use X here and wait, why not letting me do that? Doesn't let me do that. Well, it would be fun if I figured out how to work with this. Well, instead of, I guess, input name. Add an input to the function. Okay, let's just avoid this. I will not use it. Okay, this function will just three times go to the from zero, zero to two, two. And uh, let me, now it's available here. I can put it right here, loop one. Then I can, for example, set different LED color and use another one, loop one and delete those. Let's see what it looks like in fun in Python. So here, oh, it uses global I for I in range. Well, okay, maybe I wouldn't write it that way, but it did it anyway. It uses this function loop one, loop one. And let's try how it works, run. And as you can see, it has started to execute the function. And then it will change to red. Yeah, it's now red LED. And it keeps doing the function. I can stop whenever I want and I can land whenever, wherever I want. All right. Uh, I think it was a good introduction to blocks programming and uh, use it for learning how to program and then switch to Python. I recommend you do that because Python gives you more, uh, more functionalities, I guess, and in my opinion, it's easier in many ways than blocks, but blocks has advantages too. And it is, uh, for example, everything is already here and you can just drag and drop and everything works. So blocks is, is good for quick programs that um, you want to write fast. Okay, now let's uh, proceed to the next topic. If you have questions regarding block programming, you can ask me and I will uh, put in some additional models and show you how to make them move. Okay, so uh, this is an article about how to make an animated model in gazebo. Well, you can do it that way or that way. We will not animate a character yet. Well, I don't think we will ever do. We will just animate something like this. And 
here is the world explanation and um, some additional information about about the topic okay uh, first of all let me paste some models and I will put them in Katkin WS SRC Clover, Clover simulation models. So here I will put some models, put in some models. Uh, I will take them from my desktop. So this is a folder with models. Let me drag and drop. It will not allow me one. Yeah, it will. So um, let's let's take maybe five models and put them in the models folder. Control C, Control V. Okay. Uh, yes. What is uh, this models? What is it? So those are models that I've created myself previously, and uh, I think it's better. Uh, I think we will give you the link where you can download download them, so you can use them yourself. Uh, where how I use them? First of all, if I need some arrow markers that is not in my map, I can just drag and drop, and here it is. And other thing is, I can replace the texture of this marker with anything else, and this is the easiest way way to add a textured object on a scene in the world. And uh, this is why it's very useful. So I've added uh, five models. Now they are available in Gazebo. So let's just, let me just show you how you can uh, access them. You go to insert, um, minimize this menu, and here it is, arc marker 200, 201, and, and four. If I want to put a marker, I just click the marker and drag it here. Click and click here again. So those are two markers, 200 and 201. Uh, I can delete them if I want to. And they are textured and they are working. So if I want to, for example, let me put the marker number 200 here. And uh, I will even rotate this marker. Let's rotate it. Ninety degrees. So the top of the marker is there and the top of the other is there. Okay, and uh, if I want to detect this marker, uh, I will, let me just show you how it will detect the markers. So here I can type commander take off, commander take off. The drone will take off and I will open the local host image topics. Oh, sorry for that image topics and Aruka detect the bug. And you can see that it detects the marker number 200 here. So ID 200 and the other ID 90, 91, 92, 93 and so on. And um, but it's not in the map. So if you open Aruka map debug, well, map, well, this marker is not in map, but it still is detecting. And what's cool thing about this uh, usage of markers is you can navigate with it. So I will delete my loop. I will leave takeoff here and I will select navigate 
And instead of body, I will put marker. So instead of markers map, instead of body, I will ch choose just marker. And the coordinates are 0, 0, 001.5. And the ID of the marker is 200. The speed is one and wait. So this program will take off the drone and the drone will go to this marker. Let me land the drone first. So land from uh, blocks programming. Will it, will it land? No, it will not. I think I will need to land it like this. Commander. Yes. And let's see. The forward the front of the drone is facing there where my mouse is. And whenever I start navigating around this marker, the front of the drone will face to another direction. Let me run the program now. Run. OK. And it is taking off. And it sees the marker. OK, it didn't rotate around this. Well, I think it's because we did not uh, provide any yaw in our navigate. So yaw here is float none, which I also don't like. So if I want my drone to maintain the yaw relative to marker map or to specific markers, I will need to change yeah, here from load none to zero, for example. And this is one more thing, one more difference with the output code compared to what you write yourself. Let me just copy this code and edit it in my Visual Studio code. 200.py. Okay. So instead of yo equals float none, I will use yo equals zero. And uh, let me now land the drone. Land. And check. So what I expect from the drone to do now, I expect it to take off and rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise whenever I run the 200 dot point. Let's check. Okay, uh, why we want to rotate by Yao? It's be yeah, it's because um, when you use float none, well, you do not rotate. It is usually, it may really change the Yao during the flight well, mostly during takeoff, and it will maintain this uh, uneven yaw. I mean, the yaw that's off the grid, which I don't like. It may be ba bad for you if you, for example, want to detect images or uh, for other reasons. So it's better for the drone to, main to look straight along the axis. And you can see that the drone is uh, detecting this a uh, marker and it's flying around it. What if I change the marker position? Let's see. Oh, I, I moved another thing. So I've changed the marker position and it is following the marker. Look at this. Isn't that cool? So you can just navigate with a specific marker that off the board and it will it will automatically generate a program that will follow this marker wherever it goes. And if I animate this marker, it will, so it will be clear that there is an automatic movement and the drone is following this movement. So let's now animate something in Gazebo. All right, I will take 
I will land the drone now. Let's see if I can do it from here. Yes, I can. And I will close the gazebo for now because I need to edit the world. And now go to uh, Clover, Gutkin WS, SRC, Clover, Clover simulation resources and the worlds. And I will copy the world uh, and paste it as a copy and I will rename it. So it will be Aruko World. So Clover Aruko, maybe like two Clover Aruko. Okay. And uh, I will edit this world, open with Visual Studio Code. Okay, and let's see what we need to change here. So this world contains, include, it includes sun and another include is park it play in a specific position. So it's one centimeter below. Then in incl it includes Argos meet CXT, which is our markers. And there is some scene, ambient, background, and shadows, and grid, and so on. So we also have physics tag. So if you're familiar with XML, you might just find it very easy to read. So this is an XML document, actually. And this document has specific tags. Tags can be nested uh, and for example, this is a parent tag, and this is a child tag for the SDF. And the include is a child tag for world. And URI is a child tag for include. And you can close, open and close tags. So whenever you open a tag, you write uh, this angular break, break, braces and write the name of the tag. And to close the tag, you need to write another angular braces and begin the name of the tag with a slash. There is another way you can close tags is by writing slash in the end of the open tag. It doesn't, uh, well, it's not here. So you don't see this type of closing tags here, but sometimes you may find it. Um, and uh, for the tag scene, there's ambient, uh, child tag and background and shadows and others. And physics has many nested tags as well. So what do we need to add here? Let's check the tutorial. Let's just copy this little scene. It has world, so the tag world, and then it has ground plane, we don't need to copy this because we already have it. And it includes sun, we already have it, don't need to do that. But what we need to do is add an actor. So this is what I will copy from here. I will copy this at the beginning of the actor. This is not the end, so you can see open tag here, but there is no closing tag which means that the code continues here and over here, and it's closed only here. So actor will close here. So this is what I've copied right now. Uh, well, I will copy it again and let me add it somewhere. So where, where to add this? Well, it need to be on the right indentation, on the correct indentation and after world tag. So this is our world tag. I will edit this actor in between includes and scene. So here I'll add some space for it and add. I already can see that it has one extra indentation because the actor tag should be on the same level as include. So I will select these lines and press shift tab to move them left, one indentation. 
All right. We will next add the following things. So script. Script should be on the same level as link. Let me copy this and paste it right here. And once again, it's one uh, indentation, one extra indentation. So I will shift tab here and it is on the correct level. What's next? The next is trajectory, but it also is the last part of the XML document. So I will find, I will copy it until the slash actor. I will not copy the slash world and the slash SDF because I already have this in my file. So I'll copy this and paste it here. And now let's check the indentation. Well, it's clear that it's also one indentation to the right. So I will select this all and press shift tab. And now it's in the correct position. Well, we do it mostly for ourselves because it is easier for a person to read uh, XML document with the correct indentation, but it wouldn't be an error if I played it that way. So it will still work but I don't recommend you doing that. So please uh, fix all this type of errors in your files. And I will now explain what it does. So there is an actor called animated box. And it's, this actor has a link. Link is a solid piece of a robot. Well, in gazebo. Uh, if a robot contains multiple moving parts. Each of the moving part is a separate link. And uh, here the link is, it has visual tag, then in visual it has geometry tag, geometry has box tag and the box has a size tag. So this is the size of the box. There is also in uh, link you can also provide not only visual, but also the collision. Collision is a physical model. It is usually the same shape and size as visual. If it's a cube, it will be just a cube of the same size. It's invisible for, uh, it will not render, but it will hit something. So if you hit uh, in this place where the collision is, so it will not go through. But if it's an actor, the collision does not work. So the moving, box will actually go through any everything and will not hit a drone, will not hit any other object. It will just be here and we will see it, but it will be like uh, untouchable. And then script. So in this script, we have a loop tag, which is true. Mm, and uh, delay start, which is the time where from the start of the world, after which the, the trajectory will start moving. I mean, the animation will start working. Then auto start is also true, which is good for us. And then the trajectory. And here in, tra in trajectory, point will begin with the time zero. So when immediately the So uh, the object will immediately go to the position of minus one, minus one, one, zero, zero, zero. So these three, these three numbers are X, Y, and Z. And the following three numbers are rotation, X, rotation, one, rotation, Z, of course, in radians. And so this first waypoint starts with zero and the second waypoint starts with one. So it means that in between the time of zero and one, the object will move from these coordinates to these coordinates. And then in the second, in the second of two, it will move there, there, and there, and back there. <clears throat> and it will be looping through. 
So it's an infinite animation. Let's save this world and see how it works. So the next thing is we need to enable the this to Clover Aruko as a default world. So if we go back and back and open launch, simulator.launch, and we will find the six, I think it's 17th line. And here is Clover Aruko.world. And here we will add two underscore Clover and so control S. And now let's test our uh, animation, run gazebo. Yeah, and there is a moving box. But even though the FPS is high, Murphy, are you here? Hello? I think my yeah. internet just dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but we are very glad that you come back. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we see your screen. So Timofey, now you plan to demonstrate us the moving object? Yes. How many seconds are, was I missing? Uh, maybe 15 seconds. Okay, so I told you about uh, that. This is not a smooth animation, so it skips a lot of distance and is moving like that even for me. So it's not the internet issue here. Um, I think we need to decrease the speed of this object and uh, this object, the, we can do it by adding some time here. So instead of z for going from zero to one, we will go from zero to 10 and then to 20 and then to 30 and then to 40. Save this and restart the simulator. Let's wait. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I will change one more thing. So I want this box to move on the height of zero. So I will change the third number to zero everywhere. And so it will be on the ground, on the level of the ground. And let's run Gazebo. Now you can see this is a slowly moving box, but um, it still jumps and still not smooth, but it's not that clear on that speed. So it is moving. I think it's time to replace this animation with an arc marker. To do that, I will close Gazebo once again. And here in, in the link description, I'll replace this link description with the description from the model that we have. So I open a folder of Aruka 200 and I open Marker 200 SDF with Visual Studio Code. 
And here I have link description, as you can see, link, name, and so on. So here, I copy this, maybe that way, okay. And I will replace this link with my link. And, but what is very annoying here is this file has spaces, like the indentation of four spaces, while this has only two spaces and uh, one indentation here became two indentation here. And I can fix this manually if I press shift tab on the whole thing, then shift tab on this thing, then on this thing, then on this and this and this and this. Now I've fixed this. Control S. And let's see what this link makes for us. So it has a pose, then it has name and uh, some geometry, then has some material. And this is the most important thing. So material is a script that will use the, use the materials and textures from here. And uh, otherwise there would be no image on this arc mark. Okay, it's time to test. And now this is our marker number 200 and it is moving automatically, slowly. And if I do run, let me test it again. Yeah, run. So the drone will take off and can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Because it says like my internet connection is bad. Yeah, yeah. So your voice was some interrupted, but now it's okay. Yeah. Well, as you can see, we have created an automatically automatic object following with the drone. So you can think what you can do with this. You can even, you can place an Aruko marker on a car or some trolley or anything that is moving and the drone will follow this thing just uh, by itself. You don't even need to do any sophisticated program. It will just work like that to like take off, then navigate, and that's it. Uh, well, I think now I can answer some questions for you. And uh, if you want, well, you can add multiple moving actors here, just the way that I did. It's, you're not limited by one marker. You can make multiple markers. Well, I think it's good. It will be great demonstration if I uh, edit some, edit the animation. I want, let's uh, change it to move from the position of zero, um, no, 0 0.5, zero, to the position of 0 0.5, uh, four, and then back to, let's see, should I provide it? I think I should. And okay, 0 
All right, let's do it that way. So it will just go back and forth. Let's restart. So we need to give it the first coordinate and the last coordinate and the first coordinate again. It will take 10 seconds to go one way and 10 more seconds to go the other way. Okay, you can see it. It is moving. And when it's when it closes, when it will be closed, I'll run the program. Yes, it's good time to run. Oh come on, do it faster. Will it detect? Yeah, it did detect. Well, but yeah, it detects the marker and this is our object following program oh interesting so Timofey, uh, could you open the web terminal web video terminal and and we can uh, watch the camera view from the drone here yeah so uh, could you combine all uh, windows so this view and uh, yeah and simulator view yeah great by the way it's much smoother in the drones side rather than here so the drone sees it sees it perfectly it is moving uh, smooth but now but here it's not smooth which is interesting. And this is the program. <laughs> well, I think we can stop here. Uh, we have showed enough new information for today. What do you think, Svetlana? Uh, yeah, information is interesting. So maybe um, our attenders have uh, questions or maybe some feedback, or maybe you want to, to get uh, more information about any topic of which you have, um, have seen today. Uh, so, Timofey, it's a really interesting question. So, uh, for example, if we have uh, these moving objects and uh, this object will be stopped, for example, so uh, drone, how many time takes to provide the landing on this drone or on this, um, on this marker, on this object? Mm. How many time? What? Yeah, so uh, so for example, if this object will be uh, move again, so drone will be uh, continue the landing or not, or what happens? Well, I think if we just say land, well, if the drone is moving and the object is moving and you will just call land, it will land, uh, it will miss the object when it lands if the if the object is moving. We can do that if we add some additional, for example, if we uh, add some weight for like 20 seconds, then 
land and uh, you will see where it lands. So now run this program. It will first take off, then find the object, wait for 20 seconds. And uh, when the 20 seconds will pass, it will land. Yeah, it missed. And uh, one more thing is <clears throat> you can actually make a drone land precisely on a moving object, but you need to write a program specifically for that. I did that and it worked on a real drone. So, but it's uh, harder than that, just doing that, not that easy. So you need to have a loop that will slowly change the height, the altitude of the drone over this object. And uh, you will better have multiple markers. One is for the for high altitude and smaller one for lower altitude. And then it will just need to make a quick landing, not just normal, but quick with uh, with a fast navigate down to the ground. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, about uh, future possibilities of uh, this option. For example, we have we don't have a marker on the object, but we have only a bright color. For example, red. So, is it possible to? run to, to create the program which allows to follow the red object for example sure it is possible but it will require you to program some open cv code and uh, mm -hmm. it will be much harder than just the, just this program so it's much easier to detect arg markers it's already working system rather than navigating with colored markers so if you want to have a, gr a good idea for a project, you may, you may create a library or a module spe made specifically for Clover to operate on colored markers of different shapes and sizes and uh, so that it will be much as, as easy as working with Aroku markers. I think it's a good idea for a project, project and we actually had this one, but no one did that yet. Yeah. Oh, also, I have uh, one more idea for the next project. For example, a uh, drone uh, that follow for the emoji. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, know, you have a smile or a bat, <laughs> and drone uh, will fly to you only, you know, only in case of uh, your smiling. For example. Mm -hmm. That would be f that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Timofey, will you plan to uh, to provide any other topics or that's all for today? I think it's all for today, yeah, mm -hmm. it's already a lot. Okay, so um, guys, now you have a, a time for your questions. Uh, regarding to the getting information. I will send you the link uh, for the article, by the way. Is it that one? I think. Yes. And Svetlana, I will send you the files that I used for Aruka markers, you can upload them on Google Drive and send the link to all the participants. Yeah. The files. Thank you. Thank you, Timofey. Uh, it will be very, very useful, I think. So, and um, 
we add a link um, in uh, our Telegram group and you can use it, uh, these materials, of course. Um, okay, so during, while, while we wait uh, your uh, questions and uh, maybe you need the time to, uh, to calculate <laughs> this information, um, Okay, so um, before we finish, uh, I would like to share with you uh, some interesting information. Uh, it's regarding to our uh, it's regarding to our community groups and channels. It will help you to don't don't uh, don't lose any useful information. Um, just a moment. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have prepared for you our, our most important groups. So you can find it uh, on our website, coex.tf. So uh, this is a groups of support in Telegram group. So uh, you can join this group and um, uh, you can join this group and ask uh, any questions and our community will help you. Uh, drone code, uh, drone code community, it's a community for those who work, for, who work with PX4 and uh, ROS software uh, and in advanced level. And uh, news, news, it's a channel uh, where we post uh, our events and interesting uh, news uh, regarding to aero robotics area. And uh, using this channel, you can, uh, uh, you can be informed in a quick time. Okay, so, and uh, one more thing, uh, which will be useful for you too. Uh, this is um, just a moment. Yeah, um, I would like to demonstrate you our our web page just a moment so I will I try to find it yeah so uh this is web, our website, so here you can find our products and uh, information about it. Uh, then uh, our digest, so you can click and find uh, information about our upcoming events. So the upcoming events will be in May, it will be training. Um, so you can join us we are Zoom and YouTube. And in July, you can join us to World Skills Asia competition. Uh, to apply on this competition, uh, you should to leave your application here using this link. Uh, and after your application, we will connect with you to uh, get uh, the additional information from you. Um, also on our website, you can find uh, announcements of uh, our um, future upcoming events. And uh, of course, this information about our news channel channels and community groups and our social, 
media groups. And uh, one uh, more um, information. Uh, it's uh, it's a very useful um, page of aero robotics education. So we updated this um, this page, and we have added the menu, additional menu, on the right side or on the left side. So you can use it for quick navigation. For example, you want to find some information about Gazebo Simulator, you click on this string. And, and you go to the information uh, of the Gazebo Simulation. So, and also we recommend you to watch uh, these videos and uh, try to uh, repeat all steps. Um, so, uh, and finally, if you have a questions or need to help, you can contact us um, in uh, in our COEX support group, and we and our community will help you, of course. Um, okay, I have no, I see no questions. And uh, Timofey, maybe you want to add something? Yeah, I think it's, uh... It's fun to experiment with Gazebo. And uh, if you want to simulate some real world situations in, in the simulator, it's really, you can do that. You can search online how to achieve the results you want. And uh, once you discover something cool, you can share it with our groups and everyone will say, wow, cool, it's great, good job. And even it's for you, it will be very valuable experience and uh, good knowledge. Yeah, good luck with this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Timofey. So guys, uh, now you have a time for get answers for your question, if you have it. So don't hesitate to ask us mm, you can unmute your microphone and uh, ask us about Mm, about today's materials or maybe uh, you have any suggestions uh, for future webinars, for example. Uh, it will be very useful for us to get feedback from you and uh, prepare useful materials which you have interest Okay, so in any way, uh, you, you know our contacts and you can contact us uh, in any time on Telegram Messenger. So uh, now uh, time to say goodbye. So please uh, turn on your cameras and uh, mm, unmute your microphones and we will say goodbye together and we will see in the, our next event. It will be great. Oh, nobody wants to turn on the cameras. Guys, where are you? Oh, yeah, I see Deepak Kumar. Hi. Oh, Abdullah. Hi. Perfect. Uh, Sarah is here too. Uh, maybe somewhere or Aush Kumar. <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, somewhere. Okay, great. So now uh, we can uh, say goodbye and see you on our next events, webinars, or competition. Nice to see you guys. 
and bye-bye.